9 inch Ford brought to you today by the letter N and N stands for knowledge dug out my modular center section get a better look at it you can see it's a Daytona pinion support which is the good one and of course that pinion bearing must be shot yeah well we'll have a better look at it here and we clean it up I'm pretty sure the kit I bought did not come with a new bearing and it looks like you know, the bearing's out in it. it looks like it's wearing on the pinion I got a doobie case at least that's what I call them D-O-O-W-B that's got pretty good wear to it especially right there is getting in where the bearing rides there rear one there I got looking at it and it slid forward you can see it slid forward must be back here now usually there's like a star washer down in there it holds it in place and apparently that star washer went bye bye I clean it up I might have to grind on the case maybe I see it is clearance there a lot of them you got clearance there for the ring gear a lot of your new ring gears are machined at an angle so it does clear there. Now we're getting a Detroit locker ready to put the ring gear on. I had to cut the old bearings off of it. Maybe just cut them and whack them with a hammer and they'll split and they'll come right off. Now I got the new bearings pressed on my Detroit locker. Use the old center part of the bearing to sit on there and press her down. I need to find some ring gear bolts. And the factory track lock are not the same bolts as a Detroit locker or a single track. Got some somewhere. I have to go hunt, hunt and see if I can find them. I did manage to find some ring gear bolts. Actual 9 inch Ford ring gear bolts. Well, I got the ring gear on and the bolts torqued down. I the bolts. I use axles to torque it because there's no way to hold it could impact them but there's certain things I like to torque and that's one of them yeah I got the pinion support cleaned up but it looks like it's trying to rust freaking humid as heck out here I think I stuck the pinion bearing on it yeah I just got done pressing the races in to the Daytona pinion support I like to use the old race to set on top of the new race and press it down in there. You got a race is in there. The inner race is in there. It should be good to go. But really when you tighten the pinion down you should do not put a crush sleeve in it or a solid sleeve and tighten her down pretty good so they kind of even themselves out in there. Or you do anything that way they're seated in there. Just like you would your front wheel bearings you over tighten them to begin with and you back it off and then you do it again so you know the bearings and the seat the races are all seated where they need to be got the pinion set up in the daytona pinion support how i like it with a solid sleeve it's not too loose and it's not too tight got some resistance to it you don't want it so tight that the bearings will overheat but they are new bearings so they should be a little tighter than loose bearings the one thousandths of an inch makes a heck of a difference on that so I took the factory solid shim spacer and shaved it down and with the ten thousandths it was still too loose I shaved it some more and it was too tight so I went to an 11,000 shim and I'd say it's perfect now I still need to take it back apart put the seal in it and then it should be the last time it's apart I think I've had that pinion in and out of there about eight times that's what it takes to set them up with these solid pinion shims that's why they went to crush sleeves because they're cheaper to make and it takes a lot less time to set it up you just tighten it down until your bearing preloads are right. 
you gotta watch out on those if you go too far then you gotta take it apart and put a new crush sleeve in it all right got the nut off and that is not the one i'm going to use that is not a lock nut it actually was but i cut the tip of it off you don't want to keep running a lock nut up and down these you'll start screwing up the threads take the yoke off it's a good 1350 yoke brand new you have to take this over to the press and press that back out like I say it'd probably be about the eighth or ninth time I lost count, but it's been a few. Yeah, I got her set up in the press so I can press the gear out. Once I get that out, we'll put the seal in, and then we can put it back together for the final time. I right, got the gear out of there. All this gonna need to be cleaned up again, but there's a solid spacer. Before it actually puts the thickness on it, it's 479. I shaved it down to about 474, I think. I saw 475 would have been perfect. Suctioned her right down on it. Anyways, there is a shim on there. Can't seem to get it up with my fingernail. There we go, it's starting to move. Yeah, I'm gonna get off there. That's an 11,000th shim. That comes out perfect, just like I want. Like I said, I need to clean up all this stuff and then final assemble it. Getting a little dirty, pressing on and off all the time. All right, get everything cleaned up. Got a new nut. Put seal in. All oiled up and ready to go together. Now the pinion gear is finished. The pinion support. All tightened down, ready to go in the case. Now I need to do start working on the case. Now I start cleaning up the case. Kind of one of those odd nine inch Fords that ain't got the red stuff in there, glipped all or whatever they put in them. Sprayed it down with some penetrating oil so it wouldn't rust like humid as heck here. Anyways, got that bearing out down in there. I think I was hoping since it was moving forward, it wasn't spinning around around and eating the case out, but it don't feel bad. Just a little more when I tried a new bearing in it, but here's the one that was in it. It was cracked. I think that's seen better days. Maybe just squeeze it together and weld it back together. Be good as new, right? Wrong. Anyways. That's the next part of the process. Also. Didn't check before. It's a doobie case. Not that doobie might mean something else to some other people, but I always think of the doobie brothers. Alright, got a little surprise under this rag. Voila. The center section is done. The gears are in. It's set up right. I actually got lucky on this one. You can see the wear patterns right in the middle. And I got lucky because I set it up with the factory shim that went in there. Set the backlash on the carrier and it come out just perfect. If there's a shim that goes in behind there just like this. Goes over that. And this is one out of the shim pack that I had and I didn't have to fool around with all that stuff. That can make a pain in the ass out if you gotta keep and shims and everything but I got lucky for once it doesn't happen that often <laughs> once in a while it does but I get lucky on this one roll it over right here you better look at it doesn't that look pretty get a nice little in in there 
I'd show you the back last night. Got her set up here. You got her set for zero. We got seven thousandths. Calls for six to eight, so that would be perfect. Now that this is finished, we're getting closer to installing her end in the truck. Next thing is I need to clean the housing up. Get to where I can install it because that's pretty nasty inside. And also, this is one of the best setups you can get for four nine inch nodular case. Detroit locker. 1350 U joint. You can go to an aftermarket case with bigger bearings and get a 35 spline Detroit locker. This will hold more power, but it will hold just about anything you can throw at it. And always remember if you ain't got a nodular in your 9 inch, you're nothing. Because if you're on the stock one, more than likely it's going to end up busting on you. You can bust the pinion right out of the case. Seen that happen. You can blow the bolts or the caps off the case. They'll bust right down the middle there. And I'll go back. The non nodular cases will crack down in here. And also, your gears will start to run hot in the center of the gear here. The pinion will wear because. They're so soft, they'll flex, and the whole gear moves in there, and it screws up the gear setting. Pretty much, it'll end up being metal on metal there instead of having that seven or eight thousandths gap for the oil to be in there. We should be good to go. Hope. An N stands for knowledge. An N stands for knowledge. An N stands for knowledge. We'll